Zephyr Teams and Zephyr Enterprise provides a unified environment for all of your test cases. Within the test repository, this means that all of your manual, semi-automated and fully automated test cases will stay in one place. From a manual and semi-automated test case perspective, all of your test cases are built within a folder structure under a release and they'll appear like this. These will also be added to by automated test cases which run via Vortex and these test case stubs are auto-generated by your test case runs from Vortex and injected into the test case repository for you. So you really just need to manage your manual and semi-automated test cases and add them into here. Now they can be added in by either manually creating a test case by using the add button. You can inject test cases into Zephyr Enterprise by going to the three dots next to imported and using import tests, which is where you'll be presented with a mapping for all of your columns in Excel. You can map these to system fields and custom fields within Zephyr. Test cases can also be migrated over from other solutions as well, other test management solutions, such as HP ALM. Using the migration utility, you can select test cases from the test case environment within, for example, HP ALM, selecting your domain, your project, and then selecting what you'd like to migrate over, such as users, test cases, steps, etc. And using the migration utility, your selected data is pushed over from the HP ALM environment into Zeph Enterprise. Let's look at a test case. So I select this one over here. We can add metadata into the test case. So we can change, for example, the priority. We can add comments. We can add to the description, even add some tags for the test case as well. Below that, the system fields are supplemented by a whole host of custom fields, which are managed via the administration area of Zeph Enterprise or Zephyr Teams. Below that, there is an area where you can map requirements. This shows the requirements repository. You can select requirements that have been either natively stored within Zeph Enterprise or those that have been synced bidirectionally with Jira, which means you can connect up with any issue type in Jira, for example, user stories, epics, new features, improvements, even tasks or subtasks. The mappings of which will be shown in the grid view uh, which I'll show you in a moment. Below that, you have all of your steps, which can be reorganized by dragging and dropping them. You can go to the cog on the right-hand side of a step and delete a particular step as well. So your test step, test data, and expected result columns are here. If any test cases need to be semi-automated in that perhaps they need to uh, trigger a command line execution path, you would check this box put in an arbitrary script name, an arbitrary ID, and a full invocation path. This, for instance, is invoking a bat file, which will return a zero or one to denote a pass or fail. Now this is accomplished by using our automation agents. These are referred to as Zbots. Zbots can be configured by creating zips, which change the workflow of the automation agent so you can pass back additional information more than the standard information passed back by the Zbot. So typically it might pass back just a pass or fail status. You might want to pass back additional information such as the milliseconds it took to execute or details of the host machine that, it, that the script is being run on. Anything like this can be passed back using the Zbot. You can also parse particular results as well using the Zbot configuration. Below this, you have the attachments. You can drag and drop any files directly into this panel. They'll be added into the attachment area of the test case. So if I back out of here, it takes you back to the grid view. This shows the mapping to the requirements, the priority, and any other columns that you have selected from the drop-down list. So if you like a particular layout of your columns and ordering of your columns, this will always be remembered by your browser. If you'd like to reset it, use this recursive arrow at the bottom. Now, test cases can be shared from other projects and other releases, either copying by creating a duplicate or linking from other projects or other releases as well. And by linking, I mean that the version information of test cases is shared. 
so you can have the same test case being used in multiple projects. One test case in project X, for instance, could be on a newer version of the test case and on project Y, we could be using the same test case on a different version completely. But the version information is shared, so either project and its respective test case can have its version of the test case updated or downgraded so you can move back and forth as well. Now you can select test cases and edit them in bulk. You can delete them, you can duplicate them, clone them in bulk as well. You can change the mapping of the requirements either additively or replacing the existing mapping. And you can also use the export area as well. Now, wherever you see export in Zephyr, it means custom reporting. So either use this area for selected test cases or go back to the three dots next to a folder and use the export tests area over here. Either way, it presents you with a very consistent custom report wizard, consistent in the sense that the same custom report wizard is used in other applications, such as the test planning, test execution, and also the requirements application as well. But the layout is very similar. You have your system fields followed by custom fields. You have a range of filters you can choose from. For instance, I might want to only see the manual test cases. Then you have the output format, whether you'd like a, a summary or a detailed report. The detailed will give you details of the steps as well as the mappings to the requirements. And then you've got the actual format, so Excel, HTML, PDF, or even Word. Now, some users like to play with the UI presented by the test case repository. So although you can have the list view here, there is also a detailed view, which is a bit more Jira-esque. Your items or your test cases are shown on the left hand side with the content on the right hand side. If you take your mouse and move it to the left, this then shows you your test case repository, which is where you can navigate to a different folder. There is also a search area as well, which is where you can build a keyword search. Like this or you can build out a ZQL query. It's very similar to Jira's JQL query, where you can, for instance, say, uh, give me all of the test cases where the tag is equal to, say, acceptance. And here we have it. So just to reiterate, the test repository is holding all of your manual, semi-automated and fully automated test cases. If I go back to the folder view, it shows me the manual test cases, the ones that are semi-automated are denoted with an A next to them. And if you take a look at the automation folder over here, this is where all of the test case stubs will appear for any test runs conducted via Vortex. So here are some examples of some Java scripts which have run, some Java classes which have been executed running some Selenium scripts and therefore the test cases have been auto-injected into Zeph Enterprise for us.